All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we are looking at a Hrudland. And a Hrudland is an AliExpress brand. So this is an AliExpress special. It's a $175 chronograph, quartz chronograph, that takes inspiration from the 1970s design TV date Speedmaster from Omega. Specifically, the 176.0014 is the reference. And I, think, I guess I just want to start the video by talking about homages and their place in the watch world. So I've done a couple homages on the channel, most notably the Seiko Speed Timer SSC813, which is homaging to the Rolex Daytona. But where Seiko kind of just took inspiration from the Daytona and made its own unique thing, this is pretty much a blatant one-for-one -one design copy of that 1970s Omega. Having said that, that design is no longer available by Omega. You can't go into an Omega boutique and buy the 176.0014 with the value movement. So Omega just decided one day, hey, we're done with this movement, we're done with this design, we're done with this watch, we're not going to sell it anymore. And they discarded that design. So it's a it's a 50-year-old design, it's no longer available for sale, and really you know, there are a couple brands out there that do similar watches, like this Brew Metric, which we'll talk about a little bit. But for the most part, what Hruland has done with AliExpress is bring a dead design back to life. And in that aspect, I love homages because you're taking an unobtainable design that is no longer sold and you're bringing it back to life. And I think that's, that's what homages should be. They should either show some inspiration into a new design, or they should bring something back that is no longer there, something that's gone forever. And not to say that Omega will never sell this watch again, but the likelihood's very low. Uh, comparing that to something like the Pagain Design Speedmaster homage, which I tend to think is a little too on the nose, or this uh, Pagani Tudor, or Pooter, which is a, a Pelagos Black Bay type homage. Uh, this really doesn't need to exist because you can still buy a Tudor today. And this is closer to what I would consider just a knockoff watch. Um, there are enough differences, legally speaking, that it's not a knockoff. But my point being that I like the spirit of the Hruland chronograph that we have here today. I think that the watch deserves to exist. And I think at the $175 price point, it's a great watch. And so with that, let's dive into the actual watch itself. So you've noticed the blue sunburst style by now, I'm sure, which is my favorite part of the watch. The airplane style seconds hand, which if you notice is wobbling back and forth because AliExpress, why, why not? <laughs> um, the movement inside of this is a quartz Miyota. And that seconds hand is available in three different variations on AliExpress's website. So you can get that in the airplane style here, which is true to the spirit of the original Omega seconds hand. You can also get it in the traditional uh, Speedmaster seconds hand, which is just that, that needle style. Or you can get it in this triangle airplane style without the little wingtips on the end. Um, so I don't love the airplane dial, but or the airplane hand, I should say, but it is true to the original design. So for that reason, I chose it. I actually bought this this watch used from somebody else, so I did not even pay the 175. So I think the value for what I paid is really great. And I do have a, a blue Speedmaster here today that has a different style seconds hand, so you can see maybe what that would look like if it was on this watch. Uh, totally different movements. Uh, this one is inspired from the Valju uh, Day Date chronograph uh, movement that later got rolled into Eta or Swatch or both, but I digress. The watch itself is stainless steel fully, has pretty nice finishing. I should clean up some of my fingerprints here. I really do like the, the polished uh, bezel there. This does have sapphire crystal and it has a little bit of nice distortion every now and then at certain angles, especially like the edges here where the tachometer is. 
So I do like that. I love the little Easter egg homage to the Speedmaster, that happy little astronaut guy. And you might have noticed just now the, the buckle here on the bracelet. So let's zoom out and talk about the bracelet. This is an integrated bracelet, which, you know, they're all hit or miss, I'd say. There isn't a single perfect integrated bracelet out there. I think maybe the Christopher Ward 12 gets close, but it is what it is. This is a very, very chunky integrated bracelet, and it has clearly just a recycled clasp from some other watch. This anchor design, maybe that's the logo for the brand, but either way, the anchor really has no place on this watch being a Speedmaster homage. Maybe if it was a Seamaster, that'd be fine. The other thing that is completely unacceptable on this watch is the diver's extension, which just, you know, you didn't need to do that, I guess. <laughs> it's a Speedmaster. It, it never needed a diver's extension. The other thing is zero points of micro adjustment at all and no halflings. So you get these super thick, chunky links that use uh, threaded, uh, I guess, bars or link screws, I should say. So we're not talking about like cotter pins or uh, pins and collars or anything like that. So it was easy enough to adjust it and it actually fits pretty nicely on me. I'll take my Speedmaster off and show you how it wears. I really love the way that this watch wears, even though it does have very thick bracelet links. A little wrist roll for you. I think the watch is a perfect size for me. And by the grace of God, even though it has no micro adjustment and no half links, I got a good fit out of it. It's a little hot today in my room here. So um, it's, it's a little tight, but I can still get like my whole pinky under there. So it's not so tight that I'm squeezing the life out of my wrist. But yeah, we are uh, looking at a pretty good, handsome looking watch. The biggest issue with it that I have is the bracelet itself. And I'll give you some dimensions and show you what I'm talking about. So at the end links here, we're dealing with almost five millimeters of thickness. And it gets better as you go down, but really not much better at a point. So we're, we're dealing with four millimeter thick links uh, compare that to an integrated bracelet on the Brew Metric, which is very similar in design philosophy, but considerably thinner on the bracelet and also considerably more flexible. You see how much flex or lack of flex you have here versus what you have on the Brew Metric. So the Brew bracelet is certainly better in every way. And in another iteration, maybe if Rulin comes out with a second version and the bracelet's a little bit better, then the watch could be much improved, but you see micro adjustment on the bruise clasp, no divers extension. It's just a, it's just a nice bracelet. And I'll compare quickly the two chronograph functions. So you can see the difference. We have a mecha quartz watch on the right, which is a quartz battery powered watch with a mechanical chronograph movement versus a strictly quartz Miyota chronograph here on the left. I personally, would go for Mecha Quartz every time. It's just like the bare minimum for me. I think mechanical automatic chronographs are the best, but Mecha Quartz is very close because you have all the perks of a quartz watch, meaning you don't have to reset the time or date, but you also get a very satisfying sweep with the seconds hand, which you don't with the quartz. And then these pushers are super mushy and unsatisfying, except when resetting the watch or starting the chronograph function. I'd say the brew metric has better pushers in every way. So with that, I think we've covered all the aspects of the watch I want to talk about. And I would recommend the watch at 175 bucks. I think that you're getting a lot of really handsome design language out of the watch and some good history. I mean, it's, you know, you either like this style of watch or you don't, you, you either like integrated bracelets and the TV style dial or, or you don't. And I tend to like both. So for me, this watch is a no brainer. So I'll, I'll link the watch below with a couple other details about it. But if you have any questions, just hit me up on the comments. And with that, 
I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.